Hello, friends. I am the Earth. Yes, the very planet you live on. I would like you to learn about a very sad part of me. The grown-ups call it the third world. But what they are really talking about is all the poor countries in our world. The third world is in Africa, Asia and Latin America. And when I see what is going on over there, I feel like crying. They have practically nothing. And the children who live there are having a really hard time. There is no food and they are starving. There are no schools and many can't read or write, so can't prepare themselves for a better future. There are also no hospitals. So if someone falls ill, there are no doctors to help them get well. Modernization theory is used to explain the process of modernization within societies. Modernization refers to a model of a progressive transition from a pre-modern or traditional to a modern society. Modernization theory originated from the ideas of German sociologist Max Weber, 1864-1920. Long before, people will take hours of walking just to arrive at a certain destination. Some means of transportation commonly used before was Kalesa, but because of modernization, Kalesa turns into jeepneys, motorcycles, expensive cars, and a lot of more. Way before, students simply used their pens and paper as a medium in writing their assignments and projects, same as they have to scan in the library for the acquisition of information. But modernization has increased instructional technology. Classrooms, schools, and students use computers more often today than in the past for research, writing, communicating, and keeping records. In terms of agriculture, in the past, farmers would have to do field work by hand or with horse-drawn equipment. Today, most farmers use tractors and other motorized equipment to help with field work. Tractors combine plows and etc are much larger and move much faster than horses, so farmers are able to produce more food in a shorter amount of time. In 1950, W. W. Rostow proposed a five-stage model of development that further explained modernization, known as Rostow's Stages of Growth. The first stage of Rostow's model is named the Traditional Society. In a traditional society, there is a lack of development, meaning a high percentage of people in agriculture and a high percentage of national wealth only focused on what Rostow calls non-productive activities, such as military and religion. People in traditional societies build their lives around families, local communities, and religious beliefs. Their lives are often very similar to those of their ancestors. Side note, think of Mulan. They generally have very limited wealth, with most people as subsistence farmers. Little trade happens, but if any, bartering of other items is used as the form of payment. The second stage in the model is called the preconditions for takeoff. Leaders and other elite groups like kings motivate the population to start and innovate economic activities by building banks and currency. The population is influenced to start selling goods not for not just their own consumption but for sale. They also begin to develop infrastructure like water sewage and public transportation. These projects will ultimately stimulate a skyrocket in productivity. The next stage is called the takeoff stage. Rapid growth is generated in a limited number of economic activities, such as textiles or food products. Later on, these takeoff industries achieve technical advances and become productive, while other sectors of the economy may remain dominated by traditional practices. Greater individualism dominates the population with the desire of material goods. Modernization is evident in only the core areas of the country. The climax stage of the model is known as the drive to maturity. This stage includes the diffusion of modern technology previously confined to only take off industries to wide variety of industries. These other industries start to grow more rapidly than the original takeoff industries. Workers become more skilled and specialized in their jobs. This is known as industrialization. 
The final stage in Rostow's model is called the age of mass consumption. During this stage, the economy shifts from manufacturing things like steel and copper to consumer goods. Items that may have been luxuries in previous stages now become necessities as the society expands its array of goods. This stage is marked by high incomes, with the majority of workers involved in only the service sector of the economy. With man being considered as the top of the food chain, it is just an innate nature for him to use and extract resources, discover their uses and functions, and consume them for survival purposes. Since time immemorial, mankind has been the center of ecosystems searching for his basic needs and commodities. However, as time changes, so do the needs and wants of mankind. The standard of survival has increased, and the desires and needs of man have improved which results in the modernization of our needs and wants. Modernization in man's perspective is good since it makes life easier and more comfortable. It changes the paces of the daily activities making man more productive. The invention and advancement of technology as a result of man's endless need is a clear evidence and example of modernization. However, these changes have their costs. More and more resources are needed in order to produce certain goods. And since mankind has endless demand, the pressure of modernization leads to abuses in extracting natural resources. The imbalanced scenario of extraction and restoration of the natural resources are clearly evident. Yet, man has little to no effort of mitigating it. The abuses, whether in legal or illegal means, are really now hurting Mother Nature to the point that it is now demanding payments through natural calamities, global warming, and climate change. These things are the main effect not just of modernization but to the reckless act of man himself. The havoc that man created to nature is bouncing back to him in the form of these calamities, and because of modernization, Men tend to forget the importance of resources and just focus on the end product. In the end, man is still the one who suffers, and after all of the stages of advancements that man created, it still can totally save man.